Just wanted us to give him a special shout out for that. Uh, very cool. If you don't know, we're talking about meteorologist Tony Lawback is out and about. We saw a great coverage, if I can say, from uh, Tony. He was out there doing live shots, and then he turns this unbelievable story that we're going to see later. He's out there helping people, digging people out of the snow. Like Checking on people's well-being. Weather, weather hero. That's what <laughs> he we'll... rescued a cat one time. <laughs> I mean, we are employing like pretty sure six he's a different... superhero. <laughs> yeah, it's like six different jobs Gold in one star. guy. Gold so. star. I would say it's due south of due east. This funnel that I'm watching is actually, I'm facing due southwest. It is moving from right to left across my point of view. Uh, a very, very stout funnel halfway to the ground. Uh, we are uh, we are as close to a, a tornado on this storm as we've been, so we're, we're keeping an eye, but a very, very well-pronounced funnel. There is some rain that is between me and the ground on this thing. We might be, uh, we might be looking at a tornado right now here, Jay. I think I might have a touchdown or very, very close to it. I've got dust on the ground, Jay. We've got a tornado in progress. Okay, so we now have a tornado, so we're going to continue our live coverage. Our cake first alert meteorologist, Tony Lawback. So we definitely have circulation. I, I can confirm ground circulation. Not a lot of debris lofted up. I don't know. It kind of looks like it's in an area full of trees, but I'm just seeing dust. It is not fully condensed. Well, I'll tell you, it is cold here, as Kat mentioned. The wind's still blowing, but as you can see behind me, this is I-70. You can actually see it. A much cry, a different cry from what we saw earlier. Now, the wind's still blowing a little bit up here. Probably still, though, at least half of what we saw earlier this morning. Now, of course, that blizzard came through, really started to move into this region here just after 8 o'clock this morning. And I got to tell you, some of the sights out here were incredible with the limited visibility and the blowing snow made for an unbelievable sight. Check out what things look like up here this morning. Heavy snows and driving winds battered parts of Cakeland this morning. Snow began falling here on I-135 near McPherson shortly after 8 a.m. Road conditions deteriorated rapidly as blinding snow led to whiteout conditions. These roads became very slick, sending this driver into the guardrail under this overpass near town, the impact deploying her airbags. I checked on the driver and she was shaken up but uninjured as she waited for law enforcement. Road conditions were even worse along I-70 near Salina. High winds blowing snow across the interstate led to harsh whiteout conditions, reducing visibility to zero at times. The extremely hazardous conditions sent this semi into a jackknife in the median just east of the 135 interchange, crews working quickly in the extreme conditions trying to clear the wreck. About eight miles west of that, KDOT crews began to shut down I-70 at exit 244 around 10.30 this morning. State troopers were sitting at the exit next to a vehicle that spun into the ditch. The driver was hopelessly stuck but also not injured. All the while, KDOT crews were out in the midst of the storm trying to keep the roads as clear as possible, snowplows doing their best to keep up with the storm. Here in Salina, people who got off the interstate did so at truck stops, some of them not getting the winter weather memo and were a little bit underdressed for this blizzard. The heavy snows continued through the early afternoon hours and the high winds kept blowing the snow all over the place with some drifts even taking over some cars. This drift completely over the hood of this vehicle in the IHOP parking lot. I, along with two gentlemen from Colorado, assisted in pushing one man's car out of another one of those drifts. It took about 10 minutes, but the three of us got him out. Well, a much different scene here. Now, I will say I've been up and down I-70 as well as I-135 this evening, and although the snow has stopped, the wind's still blowing a little bit of it around, so still some very snow-packed and icy areas. Even recent spin-outs just within the last hour of some of these cars hitting these slick spots. So while the roads are back open for the most part here in north-central Kansas, certainly take your time. These slick spots are everywhere, and you don't want to end up in a ditch after surviving this blizzard from today. Reporting live from Salina, I'm meteorologist Tony Lawback, Cake News on your side. We went out with the uh, National Weather Service today, did a damage survey uh, with the uh, Weather Service office. Of course, you know, I got in here yesterday right after the storm hit and saw several of the homes, and to me it was pretty evident we were looking at a strong EF2 to EF3, but we took a look today and were able to see uh, the damage from the National Weather Service. They took us to other areas of the town, and uh, we got a first-hand glimpse of what it was they are looking for to rate a tornado. Oh, sunk into the ground. Taps here. Yeah. Just pulled it right out of the ground. Brad Ketchum with the National Weather Service went down the entire path of the storm, starting with the initial points on the southwest part of town, following it to the northeast. So here's the northeast corner where we were with the trees, and down here is Orslin's, uh way down here. So it looks like it made a diagonal path right through the center of town. And most of the concentrated damage is about 3rd through 5th Street, 
and mulberry to plum is where the most concentrated damage is. Uh, some of the damage you filmed already up there with the, the walls, the exterior walls gone and stuff, and that's the most extensive damage we've found so far. The concentrated area of damage includes several severely damaged homes, one of them losing its entire roof, another home lifted 10 feet off its foundation and dropped back into place, nearly cracked in half. But to assess the damage, surveyors use more detailed pieces of information. There's um, things in the EF scale that are called damage indicators, where they can actually look at the damage and the type of structures that are done. Here at the high school on the northeast part of town, those indicators included a steel building as well as this light pole. Ben, that sturdy of a pole at the base to bring it down because it's snapped right there at the base and to bring it straight down yeah that's considered ef2 type damage this is ef1 or ef2 here um, this part of this building as well those clues all across the damage path help lead the national weather service to make the rating of this tornado it's blowing in i'm actually under a, uh, an awning here in front of a house and uh I'm sheltered through most of it. Again, most of this is not, like I said, any bigger than maybe an inch and a quarter at most. Everything I'm kind of seeing rolling past me on the ground does not indicate we're looking at uh, significantly damaging hail. But again, it is wind blown, so that, that's certainly something to be aware of. Um, and the heavier hail may actually be to my north. Some of the bigger hail might actually be to my north. But uh, where I'm sitting right now, just a lot of uh, stones generally around an inch on average. Well, Blake, to say the least, the travel conditions are a nightmare. I am now returning to Salina, so I am eastbound on 7 about to approach exit 249, the Halstead Road exit. KDOT crews are in the process of shutting down the interstate at exit 244. You cannot go west on I-70 past exit 244. They've got KDOT crews right now putting up cones. A sheriff uh, sitting there at the exit. There was a vehicle in the ditch right at that exit, and the sheriff reported to me that they have uh, a jackknife semi further up the interstate, obviously. I we're not going to make it out that far. Wanted to get up here and just get a report and kind of see what the conditions were like. As you can see on my live stream here, very, very limited visibility near zero at times here as I approach uh, the 135 junction here on I-70 eastbound. I got to tell you folks, it is downright cold out here. Wind chills well below zero. But the good news though, the snow has pretty much come to an end just with the exception of a few flakes. The blowing snow though is still an issue, but the sun is already starting to make its return out there right now. Now, of course, the snow really started to come out overnight, dumping a few inches here in Wichita, which was enough to make a mess of some of the area roads. We dealt with the changeover probably about mid-afternoon. Coming up, it was basically a very cold rain, very low ceilings. The cloud layer very, very low, only a couple of hundred feet off the ground in some cases. But as the afternoon went on, it changed to sleet and eventually finally changing to snow at about 5.30. But again, that wet drive really kind of was the, the key for the morning hours, and that really prevented a lot of the KDOT crews from getting getting out and pre-treating the roads here. So when the sleet and snow finally arrived, it immediately stuck to the interstate. So all the roads, all the major highways in and out of Garden City at one point were closed down. You could not get in or out of town. All of the roads were completely snow covered. Uh, vehicles were stranded in many places. In fact, I got to give a shout out to my Uber driver here in uh, Garden City who took me back to my vehicle. I parked on a snow drift in a gas station uh, and had to, uh, to get uh, pulled out of that. So not only did he Uber me back to my car, he uh, pulled me out there as well. So a shout out to Brady here in Garden City for helping me out here after the storm had passed. I'll tell you, it is a little chilly today. And what's making it a little chillier is that wind that you're talking about here. We're getting an occasional gust upwards of 20 miles an hour here at the school. And with just a hair bit of light drizzle, you're definitely going to want to wear the long sleeves. I certainly did today, and everybody's taking heed of that advice. We're going to take you out on a Friday Blitz forecast. Three miles to the west of Ellis on eastbound I-70, a semi uh, was, looked like it would have flipped over there in the median, stretching out into both lanes. Traffic was getting around on the far shoulder. Um, hard to uh, confirm any injuries. They were working on the driver there on the street, so they were uh, busy on the scene. Drizzle kind of turned to flurries. Really wasn't anything significant. It wasn't until I got down to McPherson or so about 7.30, 7.45 when the snow really started to pick up in intensity, and I pretty much rode the band all the way down I-135. Now, the roads deteriorated very, very quickly. Of course, the intensity 
intensity of the snowfall and the wind certainly made for some travel issues in northeast Wichita. The snow has decreased in intensity dramatically just since the time I have arrived. There are some travel issues. I have seen some flashing lights on K96 uh, near Greenwich uh, just over my shoulder here. So I know that there are some people out there who are taking things as easy as they can but still are unsuccessfully navigating some of these highways. So certainly be very, very careful if you're traveling anywhere across south central Kansas. The snow coming down heavy at a time certainly made for some treacherous travel, but crews have been out in force trying to clear the highways. Unfortunately, as Jay mentioned, some of the snow already starting to lighten up and clear in some areas. Most of the heavier snow bands have been to my southwest and northeast, but finally starting to fill in here. Wakini, I've measured an inch and a half here at the truck stop at exit 127. The areas around Sedgwick still kind of complicated to get around. I have yet to actually make it into town coming up from the Halstead area behind me. You can see a white minivan that is in the ditch, uh, likely a result of some of the issues trying to drive through these waters yesterday. The water here a lot higher than it was now. Meteorologist Tony Bobak was right in the middle of it. This tornado that touched down in Butler County earlier last night. Harrowing video captured tonight by Cape Storm Chaser Tony Lawback. The storm would later produce this tornado north of the town of Lewis. First alert meteorologist Tony Lawback shooting this video. been kind of all over.
rapidly unfolding situation. You know, we, we were talking about this potential uh, for the last couple of days. This is really pushing a lot further south. This low really strengthening and diving into cake land here. You can see that snow really spreading quickly all the way down almost to the Oklahoma border. In fact, blizzard warnings have just been issued for the Dodge City area. They're experiencing blizzard conditions right now. That band of rain and snow really starting to pour work its way into south central Kansas. See a little bit of the green there just to the west of Hutch over toward Kingman. That is moving in our direction here in Wichita. I would expect the leading edge of this to move in about 7 30, 8 o'clock this morning, starting out as rain, but checking out some of the observations down in Pratt, seeing those temperatures dropping pretty quickly on the backside, so the rain will change quickly over to snow. Those blizzard warnings really spreading most of Cake Land. We're seeing this just continue to get extended down to the south. McPherson seeing the blizzard warning. Great Bend, Kinsley down to Dodge City as well. South of that, a couple of counties, we're seeing a winter weather advisory that does include Wichita metro area. But you probably got a little bit of an early wake up call thanks in part to Mother Nature setting off your weather radios. A severe thunderstorm warning in this yellow box here for Sedgwick and Western Butler counties for a collapsing thunderstorm. This is kind of uh, something we don't see very often here, but basically the line of storms that moved in from southwest Kansas and tracked east across the state overnight has started to collapse on top of Wichita. As a result, we're seeing the winds coming out of this. Think of it as a bucket of water. If you take a bucket of water and dump it on the ground, that water spreads out in all directions kind of fast. That's what we're seeing with this is basically Mother Nature dumping a bucket of water here on Wichita. This orange Pure, uh, line here moving through the Park City area right now. That is the leading edge of those gusty winds. We'll bring you in a little bit tighter here and kind of show you that moved through the airport, creating wind gusts upwards of 58 miles per hour. We measured 45 here at the Cake Studios just before we went on air. That continues to push on off to the north and east. National Weather Service has put a tornado warning up for that storm in Tribune right now. So tornado sirens probably going off on Tribune. If we take the radar full here, we're going to walk you through what we're looking at right now. We're seeing that potential for rotation in this storm right to the north of Tribune in this area right up and through here very weak rotation, but certainly evident enough to where they did put that tornado warning out. That goes until 545 p.m. Mountain Daylight Time, 645 p.m. Central Daylight Time. So if you are in Tribune, certainly want to take your tornado precautions. But look at the clearing on the backside. That is the dry slot. That's what we call this as the system really starts to wrap in some dry air. You can really clearly see that here on the model. The windy conditions, though, are going to really start to fill in as we get later into the afternoon. We're going to see those winds gusting upwards of 60 to 70 miles an hour. Pretty much the entire state of Kansas under some sort of wind advisory. The dark, uh, dark brown there, the wind, high wind warnings, wind advisories there for northeast Kansas. Again, wind gusts upwards of 70 miles an hour at times. As that system continues to push across Cake Lane, you notice we start to see some isolated showers, even some thunderstorm development around that low. As a result, we could see an isolated severe storm or two. These will be low end severe. We're talking hail, maybe up to an inch in diameter. Obviously, wind gusts to 60 miles an hour, certainly a threat. And around that low, because of the turning that's in the atmosphere, we certainly could see a couple of isolated, very brief, very weak tornadoes possible anywhere in the yellow shaded areas that storm system pushes off to the north and east. Behind that, we're seeing a lot of cold air getting dragged in with this system, pulling this out a little bit further. Blizzard conditions rampant across east Eastern Colorado and Western Nebraska could clip portions of Northwest Kansas overnight tonight. We'll bring this in a little closer and you can see the light snow developing across North Central Kansas. But again, even with light snow, the winds that we're expecting across Northwest Kansas tonight gusting upwards of 70 miles an hour could create blizzard conditions at times. That window will likely be from about 6 o'clock this evening to 6 o'clock tomorrow morning. One to three inches not out of the question there in the light blue. Elsewhere in the white, a dusting to an inch, but are expecting a a little bit of a changeover from rain to snow as the cold air behind that system starts to pour in. Highlighting the area, the basically the northwest quadrant of Cake Land for severe weather here. So again, I think from Great Bend Nest City, Scott City Tribune points north, that's going to be the biggest threat area. Hail and damaging wind gusts. Hail may be approaching golf ball size and winds exceeding 65, approaching 70 miles an hour. There is a low tornado threat today, but there are a couple of things working against that. Number one, I think the storms are going to be high base storms. So we're talking about not being able to get that rotation from the clouds down to the ground. So I think that's going to be one of the inhibiting factors. The second one being with a cold front this strong, a lot of times what happens is these storms get undercut by the front. So basically the legs of these storms getting kicked out from 
come underneath it as that front comes through. As a result, any rotation can't really get down to the ground. Now, I wouldn't rule out a tornado warning or two or an isolated brief tornado, but I think the tornado threat today is looking pretty low. So again, large hail, damaging winds, the big threat for you across northwest Kansas. She's the chief meteorologist at ABC News, and she's releasing her second book, Ginger Z, the book called Chasing Helicity into the Wind. Ginger, you and I are uh, no sh strangers to chasing helicity in a literal sense. Tell us a little bit about your new book here. Ginger, it's a pleasure to talk to you again. It's been a while. The book Chasing Helicity into the Wind on bookshelves starting today. Thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, he's got a huge beach ball today. <laughs> there you go. Tony working it out. Right I got to get my exercise. We got all this Taekwondo talk going today. I got to yeah. get it loosened up here. I'm so glad to have you with us here on Good Morning Kansas. It's Sunday morning. What about you? are one of those anti-iPhone guys. What's that feel like? I, I uh, It feels good because I didn't have to fly across the seas to go get a phone. It seems a Come little... Come on! Lucy. I'm sure it was. That's right. Come on, man. That's, uh, this is my finger. <laughs> Why is there an N on the end of autumn? What other word in the dictionary has an N after, well, I don't want to get there, after an M? Let's get to Tony right now. Shane, I believe the word you were looking for is dam, and what you really need one for this, to keep water like this from getting all over the place. And then as I worked my way further to the east, I got into some bigger snows, and I'm not kidding, folks, I had snow snowflakes the size of my shoe coming down on me there. It was something crazy to be seen. 81 degrees with a south wind at 20. There he is. There he is. He's up in the corner. He's coming. He's coming. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Ah! Can I limbo? Oh, all right. Now, I heard you guys commenting after the last live hit about the, the zipping up of the jacket here. I got a confession to make. Zippers give me fits. That's why I love pullover hoodies. I didn't get it. I know. Well, you're lost. Apparently. Well, that's a bummer. Okay. Fudge. Oh, fudge. All right. All right. Hey, listen, stick around. We're going to show this one more time. There you go. Tony Law back early this morning covering some, some snow, and apparently he said his shoes were pretty slippery, so he was able to do some of these cool dances. Dancing with the stars is considering him for the next season. And I think Mother Nature is punishing me for dancing in the snow the last couple of days because the snowflakes are coming in like BBs. We got a wind out of the north here that's blowing some of that snow in my face. One thing I can do is stand out here in the snow, and are you kidding me right now? These flakes are huge. This is just an incredible scene here. I ne This never gets old. 20 years of cover weather. I love the snow. Well, uh, Tony, before we let you go here, I've got a quick question for you because this is also uh, not just um, reporting on some of the inconveniences, but also it turned into a rescue effort as far as what I understand from your point of view. Can you talk about that? Well, yesterday, I, of course, I was out and about and I was in Kingman and one of the areas I was shooting, I, I'd gotten out of the car and I heard screaming meows uh, from a cat that at first I didn't see. Uh, once I started setting up, I actually saw him. He was over by a fence, or she actually, she was over by a fence kind of on an island surrounded by floodwaters. And of course, between me and the cat was probably about a six foot wide gap of water, which was only, you know, ankle deep, maybe a little bit more than that. But that poor cat was terrified out of its mind. So I, I bravely took the five steps across the water to, to go retrieve this poor little cat. Um, their owners evacuated from one of the nearby houses there, and unfortunately she kind of got lost in the shuffle. Um, I took her to the local vet there in Kingman. They fortunately took her in, and I was able later that afternoon to track down the owners, uh, and I believe this morning they got reunited uh, with their cat. So, um, I, you know, I'm a cat person, always been, and uh, I, I, it killed me to see that poor cat is just soaking wet and terrified. And as soon as I brought it into the car, it warmed, it cleaned itself for a while, and it was all purring and loving on me. And my wife thought I was bringing home another one, and I was like, <laughs> no, no, this one belonged to somebody. Okay. So uh, fortunately, all turned out very well there.